My name is Mark Lambert and I'm a first class power engineer and I'm also a certified energy manager. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about to, um, our power engineering program here at St. Clair. Uh, we are a third class accredited TSSA facility which means that we have these lovely boilers such as this behind me. This what we have is a 150 um, horsepower that's a fire tube boiler and we also have 125 horsepower water tube boiler. We use these in conjunction uh, to generate steam, 125 pound steam, um, that we use as a simulator for the students. Uh, power engineering is a fantastic program if you like to use your hands and you have the abil technical ability uh, because for this program there is a lot of math and um, in saying that uh, it is a difficult program because it's two year accelerated which means that it's usually a three year program that's kind of condensed into two and a half. Our program is kind of unique because not only do we deal with fossil fuels but we also do teach about renewables. Behind me here we have a, sol a, th a, thermal, a solar thermal energy system and what we do is it gathers heat from the sun and the simulator they'll be able to use, uh, they're able to use heat transfer methods such as a heat exchanger to be able to transfer the heating fluid to either air or other liquids such as, um, uh, such as heating fluids um, for your residential home or for mega hot water used for boiler systems. At St. Clair we also use a lot of visual aids. Beside me here we have some uh, uh, pressure relief devices and on them we have the, their cutaway sections because a lot of students have a hard, a difficult concept, uh, be able to concept, uh, have a concept in how this is uh, made inside and we describe the uh, 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 how steam is actually uh, pushes against the seat and how the area of the seats increased as it lifts off gives it giving these pressure relief devices popping action so we have three different types of pressure relief devices here uh, section one section eight and a section seven we also have cutaway sections of pressure regulators again these cutaways are nice because they show the operating characteristics of each device Again, it's difficult for a student to, to uh, visualize that in their head without having these visual aids. Myself, I'm kind of hands-on and I like the, using them. Uh, such as, here's another one here, we have a cutaway, sec or actually a section of a, of a piston. Uh, either comes off an air compressor or uh, an internal combustion engine. Part of operating the facility, the students also have to do water testing. Water testing involves chemistry. So what the students do during the lab is they'll be able to take um, steam and the working fluid from the boiler, bring it here, transport it over here through the piping uh, to a heat transfer devices which cool the, the steam and the heating fluid uh, so the students can take samples of it. They take these samples and they te measure uh, the amount of chemical products in each sample. They'll be checking for sulfite, which is an oxygen scavenger, sludge conditioner, which keeps, it's a polymer product that keeps all the uh, hardness and products uh, and salts suspended in, in solution so they can later be blown down. And they also check the conductivity to check the cycles of concentration in each boiler. So this lab is complete and it would look like a typical lab that, we would, that a student would operate out in industry. So after the first year, the students will have a fourth class operating engineering certificate. The students then post it here in our facility and for the second year they actually use their certificates to be able to operate the equipment. So it's nice because the students uh, progress nicely the uh, first year. They get all their uh, exams written, their SOPEC exams completed. They move on, they attain their fourth class certificate. They operate a third class plant, attain some steam time. And uh, again, they progress and they write their third class uh, certificates, uh, licenses. Uh, once they receive them, they uh, again go out, to, but however they go out in the industry and get steam time. So this is where myself as a placement coordinator would have to get involved with the industry leaders to try and get placements for our students. In 2010, TSSA, who are the governing body for power engineering in the province of Ontario, they recognized that the need for um, helping support uh, the growth of power engineers. The average age of a power engineer, this was in 2010, was 51 years old, which means that now, uh, moving forward, the average age, age is probably not going up, it's probably, uh, it's probably stabilized. However, there's a lot of opportunities for students leaving the program to go into placements. 
We also provide demonstrators for the students to work on because here they get a, a practical experience. Behind me here we have an old York Shipley boiler. The students would take the burner assembly apart, they would put this on the floor, open it up for inspection, and they would do an annual inspection on this boiler, which means that they would be crawling inside of it, looking for, uh, looking at the, in at the internal of the uh, boiler, looking for degradation, looking for uh, any, um, any, any signs of incomplete combustion, which would mean that there would, the boiler would need uh, finer tuning uh, when it goes back into service. So with using this demonstrator, it gives the students a hands-on application of using different tools, different methods, and, lo and learning and understanding uh, the operation and maintenance practices of uh, using uh, power boilers.